So a little while ago when I did my T-mount 3-inch uh, prop roundup, I tested on a 5000 KV 1304 RCX motor, and I was really impressed with the power that we got out of it compared to the uh, 1105s, 1104 class of motors. So I really wanted to check kind of all those same props also on the 1105 motor just to see how much power like we're getting more power out of it but how is our efficiency compare like are we hurting ourselves uh, by just drawing a lot more battery for the same thing so let's just dive into it and take a look um, the motor I'm testing with is the RCX 4000 KV 1105 so it's not an exact one-to-one -one. Uh, the uh, 1304 motor does have higher KV so we expect that it's going to make more peak power but we should still be able to infer something just from the the rough classes like once we get into the numbers it's pretty clear to see kind of where the class lines fall between these two motors despite this the slightly different performance we expect to see in them so this is the thrust chart over time uh, over the course of the 1304 motor test uh, and at the time we really had kind of three major groupings uh, of performance the uh, the Rotorex 3020 and the 25s giving us the most thrust uh, and our kind of modified 3020 and the uh, two and a half inch props down at the bottom and then kind of a mid, a mid grouping kind of halfway in between there. Uh, when we run basically the same run up on the 1104s, this is scaled the same as the other chart. Interesting, we'll see that middle group has really kind of fallen away and we'll get into that when we start looking at the efficiency uh, stuff later. In these tests I did have one prop that was swapped. I don't have the cut down uh, two and a half inch uh, Rotorex prop. Instead I've got an HQ3020 uh, that I only tested on the 1105 uh, and that is the one in blue. So the blue and black are different between these two, two charts but uh, that one's not really doing anything significantly different. It's just uh, holding uh, holding the line with the uh, Rotorex 3020. Interesting also, if you look at uh, just switching between these two charts, you can see basically our lowest performing motor on the 1304 is still giving us more thrust than the highest performing motor on the 1105. So there's a very significant increase in performance that we're seeing going to the larger stator size. I also thought it was interesting to look at the motor loading, uh, and that's my take on comparing the motor speed that we get running with no prop versus the motor speed that we're getting with the, the, the prop load on there. As, as we put additional load on it, the motor slows down because of that load. Uh, and that, that's uh, shown as a percentage of full running speed. So here, uh, this top number, this uh, HQ3030, uh, is up at 58% load, what I'm considering. And that means that down here at zero is what the motor does with no prop. And so we're slowed down over half the speed that we would get taking the prop off it. So that's actually pretty significant amount of loading. And if you look at the 1104 motor, uh, again, these two are on the same scale. So you can see even the highest loaded 1304, uh, we're looking at 38% load. And the lowest loading 1105 is about 37%. So again, we have that very kind of uh, nice, clean class lines. We're right at the uh, kind of top of the 1304 leads into the bottom of the 1105. So we know we get in more, th more thrust out of the, uh, the bigger motor, but how does the efficiency compare on that? Here is a similarly a scaled view of what we see on the 1105 motor so we're getting now uh, between 60 and 80 watts um, of power out of it and we're up around 150 grams of thrust on the high end and 114 120 or so um, on the low end and if i toggle over to the 1304 of course we get lots more thrust and we're pushing uh like 130 125 130 watts through it but very interesting if you compare like where again kind of where these class lines are falling the most efficient prop on the 1105 like right here at 40 grams at 100 watts uh, our efficiency is just slightly above that but on the 1304 at 40 grams and 100 watts that's the lowest performing 1304 motor so 
we're actually getting less efficiency even on the the very light props the lightest uh load on this 1105 is still loading it enough that our efficiency compared to the 1304 the the heaviest load the quad blade is still better on that motor so we're not actually gaining any efficiency by going with the smaller lighter motor we're just losing thrust and spending more power to get that same thrust so with the overviews kind of out of the way i wanted to compare just a single prop and we can get both of the tests in a single chart so it's a lot easier to compare so in this one we're looking at just the rotorx 3020 by blade prop um, and the 1105 is in green and the 1304 is in red we can see nothing really unusual looking here. Uh, our peak numbers, we're getting about 143 grams of thrust at uh, the, the high end of the test for 1105. And the same prop here is more like 250 grams. So this, it's, it's a tremendous amount of additional power that we're getting out from this this larger motor and kv is higher we're about 25 percent higher kv compared to the 4000 kv 1105 motor but not all of that we're, we're seeing far far more thrust than you kind of expect from that increase in power and you can just tell we've increased the kv in the motor but we have so much more torque available that we're able to use that a lot more as well you know this is far far beyond the the realms of like having to compare you know the motor weighs two grams more or whatever uh you know we've nearly doubled the power output and from our our global ones we've seen we've doubled the power output and we're more efficient we're using less amps to get twice the power or uh i should say less amps per gram of thrust to get more power and here comparing the efficiency uh, of the two we can see that really clearly laid out uh, the 1105 here uh, in this case uh, the further to the right uh, the line is the worse it is for efficiency this is our, our watts down here at the bottom so this is showing us that on the 1105 motor here at this kind of level you know say this level here is getting about 143 grams of thrust right right, right at its peak um, on the 1304 motor we're pulling 48 and a half watts to get that peak power and then on the 1105 we're pulling 66 watts so a lot more power is going into that motor to get the same exact thrust that we get on the larger motor and that's a really big difference all the way down the power band all the way down to the very very uh smallest amounts of thrust uh, 43 grams you know six watts this is at idle at idle it doesn't really matter uh but once we're hitting 40 grams of thrust this is kind of your your hover uh you know on a small uh 120 class if you're looking at you know maybe 150 grams even 200 grams for like a heavy heavy 120 build um you know this is your hover thrust down here where yeah they're basically they hover about the same but as soon as you start trying to move past that uh the 1304 just leaps ahead with it, its efficiency Something else that I found really, really interesting when I did these tests, uh, we looked at the two and a half inch uh, modular Rotor X prop, and on the 1304 motor, did okay. Uh, it was uh, the, some of the, the higher loads, but there was a kind of a clear use case for where you would want one or the other. On the 1105 motor, there was much less separation between them. So this is just the 1105 motor and we're testing the uh, the two bladed prop in green and the four bladed prop in red and they basically they're very very similar and it threw me at first because this the the peak numbers we're seeing only 114 grams for the two and 121 grams for the four so we're only gaining seven grams of thrust or so from going to the quad blade and we've seen just like in the um, 13 to 4 we do lose a lot of efficiency to go to the, the quad we're getting almost no thrust out of it at all over the uh the mid band you can see that the quad uh is a lot more linear throughout the uh the by blade definitely has kind of more of a curve to it so your mid bound power the quad is going to be more responsive but it doesn't mean the by blade can't make those same numbers up until kind of this point in your throttle range almost you know kind of to 80 percent of the throttle you know if you just put a throttle curve 
you can we can make this prop give this thrust number and you know we can kind of compensate for the, the curvature of it but it's just this tiny tiny little bit at the top when we looked at the 13 on the 1304 uh prop tests we saw that you know there was there was clear separation between the two props so what we're seeing here is the quad blade really really loading down the 11 to 5 and basically we're overloading the motor we're not getting productive work out of it by propping up anymore with this particular uh style of blade so we've doubled the number of blades but we're not really getting any additional performance now i hear that they fly different they have different feel and yes there certainly is a lot like you know right in the, the middle of your throttle range you know, you're looking at 67 grams of thrust versus 56 so you've got 11 grams more thrust in your midband but that comes at a really really big cost and efficiency and we can get the same thrust not in in the exact midband but the same thrust we can get out of this other uh prop if we you know apply a slight curve to it the motor loading really shows a lot the the difference in uh load on the motor the two-bladed prop is peaking out around 37 percent loaded down from uh no load and the quad blade up to almost 50 percent loading so half the speed of its free running so it's a really really big difference in uh speed between the two and the efficiency of course shows that really really clearly this is the same efficiency uh, setup as before where we've got further to the right is worse uh, the quad blade in red you can see basically the same performance this is this is the the peak thrust from the two bladed prop and in order to get that same thrust you know here we're, we're pulling 57 almost 58 watts and to get that same exact thrust over here we're at 65 watts and like that's how much more power it's taking to get us the same thrust that we had from the lighter prop and that gap in efficiency is really clear all the way down the line even you know really low down we have a very big gap between where the uh you know we're getting 34 grams of thrust for five watts in order to get 34 grams of thrust uh we need almost nine watts out of the quad blade I think this could be really interesting with maybe some of the other 1105 motors on the market if there's anything that has more powerful magnets uh, or tighter air gaps or something like that. This uh, RCX 1105 just definitely does not have the torque to run the quad bladed version of this two and a half inch prop. But we can get good results for as we can see with the much much bigger motor the 1304 if we have more torque then we can make use of that extra power and, and we can take the efficiency loss but still actually get something more for it uh, at the top end as well as uh, how it performs in the midband also uh something that i talked about in one of my uh, much earlier videos that i don't have a proper test setup for but i thought was really uh, really interesting this is back comparing the two motor classes against each other um, this is a chart of the RPM throughout the whole test, um, but if we zoom in all the way on the very, very end, how quick they are to, to break. Because um, again, just in the 1407, you know, you think, well, it's got a much, much heavier bell, there's more mass in the, the motor, uh, so how is that going to hurt our, the responsiveness? You can see, if we look closely, the, the braking zones, because this, this isn't a braking test and I don't have really tight timing, um, on the motor commands in this case the braking happens uh, begins much uh, later uh, for the, the 1304 motor uh, just because the commands aren't aren't synced for this event but the gap here between this braking zone and the braking zone there is about 20 milliseconds so that's a pretty big gap but you can see even though it's braking from a much higher rpm we're coming down from almost 38,000 rpm we're starting 20 milliseconds after the 1101 five motor has started braking but we still crash down and catch up before we've actually stopped before we're at idle we start 20 milliseconds later and still are able to catch up so if you can imagine and and even if this uh, like if you compare the speeds coming from a like rpm like let's say we we go with the larger motor because it has more torque but we run it at a slower speed um, because we are getting more efficiency throughout the entire power band on the larger motor so we're not looking for more power we want more efficiency for the power we're already using if we imagine that we were running this motor here at 
30,000 RPM, just like the 1105, this braking zone right down there is still much steeper than the curve that we're getting out of the 1105. And this gap here, if you kind of, rev you know, subtract that out and see where this would be over at that distance away, you can see that despite the heavier bell, it has so much more torque, it's able to brake significantly faster. And uh, once I can get together some good uh, response time tests, I think we'll see some really interesting stuff. Um, something like this with their with the uh, with all the samples aligned uh, and then at a higher rate, uh, higher uh, sampling rate on the tack. Um, the uh, bigger motor in this case looks to be significantly more responsive to speed changes than the 1105. So the 1105 is is under a heavier load and it's responding slower. We we get so much more thrust out of the 1304 compared to the 1105. Uh, you know we take a bit of a, a weight penalty, but considering we're nearly doubling our power output. And if we aren't doubling our power output, um, like even comparing the efficiency, because our, our best efficiency on the 1105 is the same as kind of our worst efficiency there. And I think that this, this gap that we're looking at, so it's about a 2.8 uh, grams per watt uh, efficiency. If we look at the same here at about 50, gra uh, 50 uh, watts, uh, 124 grams. So... 2.4 so 2.8 grams of thrust at the same power level versus 2.4 grams of thrust per watt uh, with the the lighter motor so there's a really really big gap in performance there even if you're compensating for an extra you know 8 8 to 10 grams of weight in your build uh, you can very easily kind of take that out uh, you know, run run slightly more power to compensate for the extra weight, and you're still going to be at the same power level but higher efficiency. So you'll get uh, less sag and more time out of the battery for the uh, exact same uh, thrust to weight ratio performance in the air.